Right, this is a lecture on transcription in eukaryotic organisms. It's part one of a two-part lecture. Transcription in eukaryotes is more complex than what occurs in prokaryotic cells, and this is for several reasons. These reasons include the size, the large size, and the complexity of the eukaryotic genome, the fact that um, the gene structure itself within eukaryotes is more complex. For example, they have introns and also the um, requirements with regards to the regulation of gene expression are more complex in eukaryotes. And this is to account for the fact that at the level of an organism, multicellular eukaryotes in any case have different types of cells that are found in different tissues, they have longer lifespans, um, and more complex interactions with the environment than, is seen or than are seen in many prokaryotic cells. To accommodate for this increased complexity, eukaryotes have more RNA polymerases than prokaryotes do, and the number that they have depends on the type of eukaryote. Eukaryotes also rely on multiple protein transcription factors that can all interact, or, the, or many of which can interact, with a variety of small molecules, not proteins, but small molecules, that play, um, in combination, play a role in regulating transcription. Let's take a look at the process. Shown here is an RNA polymerase, it's polymerase 2, from the yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae. It's a common yeast used for many different purposes, for food and beverage engineering, for the production of alcoholic beverages, um, and for biotechnology, and also just an organism in its own right. So you can see um, from this cartoon that this RNA polymerase is busy doing transcription, and you can see that because it's actually attached to DNA. It's kind of a crappy cartoon in that it's not really showing the transcription bubble, and it looks like the double helix is still connected. Um, but let's just forget about that for now and pay attention to the point of the figure. And the point of the figure is to um, illustrate the concept that RNA polymerases have a lot of subunits. Each of those colors is a different subunit. All RNA pr polymerases have a lot of subunits. When they're all assembled together and the protein is functional, we call that complex a holoenzyme. Like DNA polymerase, RNA polymerase requires not just its subunits, but also the cofactor magnesium, Mg2+, inorganic cation. Um, so another point that I want to make while you're looking at this picture of an RNA polymerase is that in eukaryotes, they do not have the subunit referred to as sigma factor. Instead, the role of sigma factor is accomplished by additional proteins that we will refer to as transcription factors. This is a cartoon depicting a typical eukaryotic promoter. You should notice similarities with the promoters of prokaryotes, for example, particular consensus sequences that occur immediately upstream of the plus one site. The plus one site, you should recall, signifies the first nucleotide transcribed into RNA. So that's where transcription really begins, okay? The consensus sequences shown include the GC rich box, the CAAT box, or the CAT box, and the TATA box. These are all common elements that are seen in most, although not all, eukaryotic promoters. And the positioning of those consensus sequences relative to the plus one site is shown here as well. All of that taken together is referred to as a core promoter. The core promoter will be located immediately beside the gene. Another way of saying that is that it is cis to the gene. And it will be very close to the gene at the positions indicated there, minus 25, minus 80, minus 90, and so on. The purpose of the core promoter region is to precisely place RNA polymerase for transcription so that it occurs in frame, okay, so that transcription happens in the reading frame. Now, not shown, but I want you to imagine, are sequences that can be much further away, for example, 50 to 200 nucleotides away, in which case they are called promoter proximal elements, and also sequences that can be somewhere else entirely in the genome, perhaps even on another chromosome. Those would be called distal promoter or promoter distal elements, distal meaning farther away. Proximal meaning close, to, very close. Okay, these additional elements are considered part of the initiation process. They're, you know, they could be considered part of the promoter, and what they do is they play a role in binding to proteins that help in initiation. They can help to either turn it up 
or turn it down, therefore playing a role in the regulation of transcription and therefore the regulation of gene expression. Let's look um, at the steps of eukaryotic transcription, starting at the beginning, which is the most complex part, the initiation of transcription. So again, remember that transcription factors, which are shown here in purple, and they're proteins, replace the sigma factor that works in prokaryotic transcription. Here we see the transcription factors TAF and TBP, what they mean is written on the slide. These are binding to form a complex called TF11D. This complex binds to the TATA box in the core promoter region. Now we are committed to transcription. We now have a situation often referred to as the minimal initiation complex. Once this occurs, then, like a domino effect, additional transcription factors, specifically TF1BB um, and TF2F and RNA polymerase 2, and again here, if you'll remember from the previous lecture, it's RNA polymerase 2 that tells us this is a coding gene. Okay? Um, anyway, all of those factors bind to form what is referred to as the complete initiation complex. Now we are almost ready to start. It gets just a little bit messier, however. All right, now come the last two of what are considered the general transcription factors. All of those purpley, bluey sort of protein blobs are general transcription factors. The last two are TF2E and TF2H. They bind, and now we have um, a, an intact initiation complex. RNA polymerase 2 is there as well. It's starting to look pretty crowded, isn't it? The RNA polymerase um, will then be able to actually begin transcription, so it's kind of off like a horse off at the races. It, and the RNA polymerase will, um, initiation is now done, RNA polymerase will now continue, and it will transcribe the length of this gene, and as it goes, it will be moving down the gene, moving on the gene in the 3 to 5 prime orientation, producing new RNA in the 5 to 3 prime orientation by adding new nucleotides to the 3 prime end of the growing RNA strand. It is catalyzing the formation of phosphodiester linkages. All of that is just as we have discussed in previous lectures and as you have learned in previous classes. Eventually it will come to the end of the gene. Eventually RNA polymerase will come to the end. At the end of the gene in eukaryotes you will find um, termination sequences and they will interact with a variety of proteins, and that's how termination ends. We will not discuss that further here. The termination of eukaryotic transcription is, is actually pretty complex and a little bit beyond the scope of this class. All right, so we just considered what's referred to as the basal transcriptional apparatus, in other words, the minimum transcription apparatus in eukaryotes. Now, that is not all there is to the story of eukaryotic gene transcription. Um, many also use um, sequences that are referred to as enhancers or silencers, or perhaps both. And the purpose of those sequences are to bind to activator or repressor proteins. And we'll consider that a little bit further now. And that, all of that in combination helps to regulate whether transcription happens or not, and whether transcription happens frequently or a lot or slowly, part of how we regulate gene expression. Basal transcriptional apparatus means just having the minimum. So if that's all you have there, the stuff that we've just covered, you'll probably get transcription, but it'll be at a relatively, um, perhaps a relatively low level. So again, enhancers are sequencers that bind activator proteins. They can also bind coactivator proteins. These are able to work with the basal transcriptional apparatus to increase the overall level of transcription. So shown in this particular figure, you can see activator proteins and coactivator proteins in green, and they are associated with the um, complete initiation complex where RNA polymerase 2 is ready at the plus 1 site. And that association will facilitate increased and better binding of RNA polymerase 2 to the promoter, upregulating or turning up increased levels of transcription. In contrast, silencers are sequences that bind repressor proteins and act to reduce transcription. So shown in this figure, we've got actually quite a lot going on, but you can note the purple repressor protein binding to the silencer area, and that, when it happens, is able to interfere, in this particular example, 
with the binding of activator proteins and enhancer sequences. So the one mechanism um, interferes with the other mechanism, ultimately playing a role in regulating transcription. Now I'd like you to move on to the next and final part of this lecture on eukaryotic gene transcription.